This is a globe-based air purifier that uses water and more notably a curtain of fine droplets of water to clean the air. Well, that's the theory behind it. And uh, these have been around for a long time. Bef when they first came out, it was just a plain globe uh, with no illumination. The illumination adds quite a lot, so this is a good thing they've added. And the idea is there's a fan at the top here, uh, a horizontal fan here, with a tapered shaft, a hollow shaft going down to the bottom of the water. And because it's tapered and it's spinning, the water gets thrown out to the side of the shaft and it climbs it uh, to the top where it then sprays out uh, and gets thrown out along with the air that's being drawn in from the top of the unit uh, into the fan. And supposedly a combination of this air and the fine spray of water cleans the dirt out of the air. And you can see the tiny little droplets here. Now it's interesting to note that if you just use ordinary water you get fairly large droplets. But uh, when you add their, I'm guessing it's a very, very mild detergent, but uh, when you add their aroma and additive, it, you only need a single drip. It breaks the surface tension and creates a much finer droplet effect and puts out an aroma as well. And they claim it has sterilizing effects in the air too. But um, I think we should open this up and see what's inside it. So that's us back at the bench, and now because I've tipped all the water out of it, uh, we can see the mechanism on the side. And it is really just a motor spinning this arrangement here, which has this tapered uh, water guide that the water, because it's slightly tapered, the water being thrown out, out against the side travels up it. And when it travels to the top, and this is where it's kind of odd, uh, it comes out these slots and onto the sort of disc itself and gets propelled out. But some does seem to get out in the top as well, through the sort of clips. I guess water being water, water will get everywhere. And in the case of the, uh, when it's in here, when it's clipped together, it just kind of sits on. It doesn't screw or clip on anyway, really, it just sits. Uh, the water that's propelled from that spinning fan blade hits the side of the drum, it hits it round about here, which means that it's deflected down the side of the wall and not out the top. Now, when I got this, it was, these things are usually, you can, well, pull them off like this. And it was actually a lot higher, and initially when I turned this on, I don't know if I put too much of this stuff in, but it was kind of splat, the, the underside of this was really wet, I don't know if it was maybe the foaming and up uh, or that had done it, or maybe the water was deflecting uh, and hitting uh, a wee bit too high and getting drawn up. I'm not really sure. You also have to consider that air does actually come down through this hole here and get blown through this vent here. But the power consumption of this is about 9 or 10 watts. It says the rated uh, consumption is 10 watts. Let's just push that on to... Um, oh, that's way too high. Yeah, I'll, I'll sort that out later on. But, uh, if I turn this on now and bring in the hoppy meter so we can see... That starts spinning. The power stabilizes it, yeah, about, say, it's 9.8 watts, so let's say 10 watts, but if I grab a hold of it and stall it, it doesn't actually go up all that much. Maybe one watt. So um, that's quite interesting, though at that point the motor does lose its cooling. There are, this is where the fan is going to blow air up against, against the microphone, there are four individual uh, color changing LEDs. They're the self color changing LEDs, and they're uh, not synchronized anyway, they just do their own thing. So let's uh, take this apart, shall we? Um, screwdriver. There are four screws holding this in. Let's actually pull this off because it might actually be easier. Four screws holding it into the top part of the housing. Now, when I actually got my first one of these, this is the second one I've owned. I got this recently. I'll tell you where I got it from. It came from eBay. Uh, it cost £17.99 and came from a seller called Think Price in the UK. came through quite quickly. Uh, the £17.99 price included an extra set of these sort of chemical aromas, which is an emulsion because it says shake well before using. Okay. Right, let's get this out. So, the air is coming in through this pattern slot here, and it's travelling past the motor and everything in here, which is quite a good design. 
it's going down to the centre because the fan will be throwing the air out the way from the centre. And once it's done that, the only way the air can get out, because the thing sits on here quite closely, the only place the air can get out is through this vent here, which couples onto this channel here and diverts it out this slot. So from the top, the air is going in. This is getting all grubby off the bench. Uh, the air goes in, this pat pattern slot comes out this straight slot here. The power supply for the LEDs. Now, this was kind of listed. It said something like, it says ionizer. That's a bit annoying because uh, many of these uh, air freshener type companies say, as, as soon as there's water being splashed about involved, they say, oh yes, it's, it ionizes the air. It does not. This is not an ionizer. There is an ionizer option, and I'm guessing it may be this little plastic uh, channel here that might have one of those very ordinary ionizer models, modules you get. They're very common. And if they're doing that, they might possibly just sit it across in front of the airflow here. Not sure, unless it ionizes the air coming in, ch puts a charge in it. Not sure. Uh, the power supply here, what size is that capacitor? I'm noticing for a start that the LEDs look as though they're wired in parallel. Let's get this circuit board out. Let's get all the electronics out. The electronics are purely for the illumination. The unit on its own, all, all it requires is this motor. And my first unit did just have a motor. That's all it had. Okay. What have we got here? So they've got wires coming through. And then they've poked the LEDs through from the uh, track side. Uh, and uh, then they've soldered them onto the wires coming through from the other side just so they can mount the LEDs on a single-sided board on the track side. That's reasonable enough. Uh, I'm guessing all the LEDs are in parallel here. Let's uh, take a look at the whole circuit. I'm guessing this is discharged. I've been stung before when it wasn't discharged because the capacitor wasn't connected. The resistor, should I say? Yeah, it's discharged. The value of the capacitor is 400 volt. Oh, it's one microfarad. That's huge. That is huge for a, particularly on 240 volt supply. Then again, all these LEDs are in parallel, which is an odd way to do it. They could have used a much lower value, like 330 nanofarad, and then wired all the LEDs in series. I wonder why they did that. Although, having said that, some of the earlier colour-changing LEDs didn't like being wired in series, uh, and they had problems when they went open circuit if the voltage went up too high across them, but the modern ones don't seem to have that problem, hence they're quite common use in Christmas lights. So the current is limited through the capacitor. Uh, it's a discrete bridge rectifier. And then it really is just... Uh, the capacitor is a, a decoupling capacitor, which is odd, as well as a little electrolytic, uh, 20, 220 microfarad, yep, 16 volts, and then a 100 ohm resistor between all the LEDs in parallel. Okay, I wonder, uh, hold on, I'm just going to chop that out in fact. I want to see what the power drops to without this. Let's just chop this off. Leave those wires out in a precarious way, plug it in. I'll stick this back on again just so something to grab. Make sure I don't go near these wires. Doesn't make much difference. It's gone down to about... Oh yeah, and now it's run up. It's gone down to 9.3 watts. So it's not that much of a load, really. And it stays just under 10 watts when installed. Okay, that's interesting. Let's unplug that before I do myself a mischief. Now, on my first one, because I didn't have the LED option at the time, I added LEDs myself, but the circuitry I used... Where's a notepad? I'm trying to remember what I used, because there's a couple of options. I measured the current uh, through the motor, which in this case was 55 milliamps. Um, And I think the stall current was somewhere, it didn't really go up that 
much higher. Uh, what I used was I connected in Sears the motor. I used the motor effectively as a choke, I suppose you could call it. Uh, and I'm trying to remember how I did this. Did I just have inverse parallel arrays of LEDs? I might have done it that way to make up the sort of current that was going through the uh, motor, which would have been the easiest approach. Uh, but it would have been flickery. Or I may, and I think this is what I did, I think I took the, used the motor as the ballast again, the current limiter, because I, I tried stalling it. Uh, notably, uh, when I put washing up liquid in the bowl and it all foamed up inside, I came back and found the unit uh, had actually stalled. This was turning really slowly. Not this particular one, the other one. Uh, because the <coughs> foam had backed up into it and was, it just turned into thick mousse inside. I thought I'd damaged it. The motor was warm, but it wasn't really bothered. So um, the uh, I used the motor. I'm pretty sure I used a bridge rectifier made from discrete diodes. So uh, bridge rectifier plus, minus, AC, AC, all the diodes in a bridge rectifier point towards the positive connection. So that's the bands in the diodes all point in that direction. Uh, and that means that uh, if you put the LEDs across this, your array of LEDs, in which case I could have used maybe a few strings and put actually quite a lot in series, I could have done that as well with that. But I do remember uh, the other unit I absolutely peppered with LEDs, far too many LEDs, it ended up a bit bright. But something like this, with uh, the large array of LEDs just bridging the positive to the negative. So the current, whichever way it was flowing, the AC current, it would go through the LEDs and then through the motor, no matter which direction it was flowing. Um, and then I basically drilled holes and press-fitted the LEDs into it so they were actually protruding right through the case. And it meant the thing was just super bright, really, really bright. A bit too bright, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's neat enough. It does the job. I don't know what its cleaning power is. I've seen these in shopping malls. When these first came out, they were uh, all being sold by the, uh, you know, the salesmen in shopping malls who just exaggerate things a little bit. And the bowls were just absolutely full of manky water. And they were saying, oh, yes, let's take that out there today. And you knew fine well that they just put dirt in the water because there was no way that it would have taken that amount of dirt out there. Um, but then again, some people, uh, I was looking at the Amazon feedback on other models and uh, some people claim it does get, take a lot of dirt out there. So I guess there must be something to it. And that is literally just the water spraying off. This is a mist and the air mingling with it. They also claim it uh, humidifies the air. That's not necessarily a great thing in all circumstances, but um, I suppose the gauge of that would be how fast the water went down in the tank. But yeah, it's quite a neat unit. It's visually quite appealing. It sounds quite nice. And if it has that cleaning effect, then it all adds up to make sort of a fairly interesting device.